I'm going to be showing you guys one tip for all 22 agents in Valorant in order from release date. So we're going to be starting off with Brimstone. Most people will know that in post plant situations, a Brimstone Molly lineup will last seven seconds to help win the round. But if you don't know a lineup, you can simply look up into the sky, open your smoke hut and drop a smoke on the spike. Aim at where the smoke formed in the sky and throw your molly and this should travel all the way on the spike for an on the fly lineup as long as there isn't an obstacle that blocks it. Next up we got Viper. You can also find a on the fly molly lineup for this agent very easily. All you have to do is ping where you want the molly to land, aim at the ping and then look straight up as far as you can and hold W and then when the edge of your sound circle on your minimap touches the ping, fire the molly and this should always land on the ping as long as an obstacle doesn't block it. And if you're one of the many people that need help ranking up, you need to check out Gosu Academy. Gosu can help you take your gameplay to the next level since one of the main struggles when ranking up is not knowing what area that you need to improve on. Gosu Academy is the place to find the highest quality coaching and every single month Gosu brings in coaches from franchise pro teams to give exclusive lectures so you can literally be taught from the best of the best. They also have an insane amount of resources like VOD review classes taught by real pro Valorant coaches. And you can even play in weekly rank based 10 mans ran by those same pro coaches. So if you want to learn from the best or you want to meet some friends in your rank to grind and climb the ladders with, you need to check out the link in the pinned comment or description. And it's absolutely free for the first 30 days on sign up. So thank you so much to Gosu Academy for sponsoring today's video. And let's get right back into the video. After that, we got Omen. There's a bunch of tips I'd like to talk about for him, but I think the most interesting thing that you can do with him is being able to grab a weapon on the floor with his ultimate. So if you're on a save round and your teammate gets a pick, simply ping the weapon and then use your ultimate on the ping and when you return you get a free weapon this same concept can be used with the spike if the enemies have control of it simply use your ultimate on top of the spike to pick it up next we got killjoy and a really strong strategy that not many people use is playing retake on a site but saving their nano swarms to combo it with their ultimate so for example if the enemy team plants a on ascent you could drop your killjoy ultimate in tree so that the only area that they could avoid it is in wine and then stand right here in tree and aim and throw this molly lineup that lands in wine which makes anyone in wine a free frag or they get detained if they try to avoid the mollies to get you a pretty easy retake round after that we got cypher and his cages are one thing i see people don't understand the best so in short a cypher cage placed on top of an obstacle will cover double the space a regular cage would so with this concept in mind you can throw some fairly easy one-way cages to get some free frags on an enemy that can't see you usually i would combo this with a low trip wire as well to make them highlighted as they are walking through your one way. After that, we got Soba. And one thing I noticed many lower ranked players don't do correctly is using their shock darts to break enemy utility. A single shock dart could ruin an entire killjoy or cypher setup, which makes your duelist job much easier. So when you're going to take a sight, use your drone to find the setup. And then once you find it, simply throw a shock dart at it and boom, no killjoy mollies to stop you and your team from pushing into sight. After that, we got Sage. And the number one tip everyone always knows is grim walls to get an off angle to get you easy frags but there's another type of wall i like to do with sage and it's a one-way wall if you place a wall on top of something you can often look underneath it to get an angle on the enemy's toes to get you some free frags next up we got phoenix who's a pretty straightforward character but the main thing i don't see people using is the flash molly combo my friend andrew often does this where you simply throw your molly at the start of the round with a lineup and then throw a flash to blind enemies which forces them into cover which is in the molly which will often get you free frags even in immortal lobbies after that we got jet who is one of the most played characters in the game and yet i never see people using their smoke correctly jet smoke can be curved and placed anywhere meaning you can essentially throw a one way for yourself at almost any place on almost any map simply just throw your smoke at the top of a doorway and if an enemy tries to peek you You'll see their feet and they can't see you. Next up, we got Reyna. And for her, I'm just going to talk about her dismissibility as a whole. So for reference, a Reyna dismiss can avoid a breach ultimate if timed correctly. 
a fade ultimate if timed correctly and a killjoy ultimate if timed correctly but a really cool thing that many people don't know is that you can actually dismiss through deadlock's wall to catch people off guard since they typically won't be aiming at something that's walled off already after that we got raise and one thing i never see lower ranked players do is use her blast packs to peek or disrupt an enemy's peek so when peeking an enemy to ferrari peek and make yourself harder to hit Throw your blast pack and use it to peek with it like this to go super wide and super fast. If an enemy is about to peek you, you can throw a blast pack at them to make them bounce and peek them while they're still inaccurate. Then we got breach and honestly this tip is just cool because it's creative but you can actually get on top of angles with your breach ult in a self boost fashion. So for example, if an enemy sage walls you off mid on split, you could technically use your ultimate to stun them while also boosting yourself on top of the wall to get a free pick. After that, we got Sky. And the number one thing players don't do in the lower ranks is use Sky's flash correctly. You can use it in a bunch of different ways, but my favorite way to use it is throwing at a wall and letting it go. And as soon as I'm about to peek an angle, popping it so that I can create my own one-way flash to peek an enemy. Then we got Yoru. You aren't normally able to place your teleport teleport on top of certain angles but if you place your clone first and then place your teleport you can teleport to get on top of off angles a yoru you normally couldn't get on top of this allows you to catch enemies off guard and possibly get some easy frags after that we got astra and a really cool tip that i often don't see people doing is pulling back an astra star to deny enemy information and possibly get you a good timing window for example on split you could astra star a main on attack and pull it back as you walk across the ramp without being seen. This will allow you to possibly make your way up ramp without them knowing and get a good lurk off. For KO, I often see people not using their flashes correctly. You can almost always create a one-way flash for yourself by flashing at a 90 degree angle behind you and peeking with it, but you can also do this if you're on an elevation. For example, on Icebox, you could right click a flash below you from rafters to blind anyone peeking main, but you won't be blinded at all, so it should really help you out. For Chamber, I would say his Ron rendezvous placement is the most important thing you can use this to get on top of off angles and then teleport and then pick it up and place it in a safe location to use it again in the same round after taking a shot next up we got neon and one of the main things i see people doing wrong is using the wall incorrectly just throwing a wall out a main on ascent for example will allow your enemies to get close behind your wall and catch you off guard Instead, you can throw it over an obstacle if you aim above it to smoke off tree, for example, for your team as you are entering site, which is especially nice when teammates think you're trolling and pick five duelists. For fade, it can be really strong on a retake. You can use your haunt to get spam kills when smoked off. For example, on ascent, if you're smoked off in tree, you could throw a eye above you basically anywhere and just spam through the smoke on enemies trying to run in. For harbor, you can actually control how fast you're using the high tide by simply looking up while while throwing the wall. This allows you to throw cleaner walls with less gaps and if you want to stop the wall at any point just right click on your mouse to stop the wall. For Gecko a very simple but effective tip is that when using the thrash ability if you constantly overshoot it and it's popping behind them you can actually detonate it midair by left clicking twice. So never miss a Gecko ult again. For Deadlock if you ever find yourself in a 1v1 situation with your ultimate you can throw a grab net lineup onto spike and then simply shoot your ultimate at them which they aren't able to avoid because they're stuck in a grab net for easy round win. And finally for ISO, if you have any agent on your team with a damage ability, it is really strong to combo the undercut with the damage ability. For example, if you have a Sova on your team, you could throw an undercut and get your Sova to shock dart to get free frags if they're in there or deal a ton of chip damage early round. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure to drop a comment and a like and let me know if you guys want a part two.